I've combined and summarized the content from my schizophrenia videos into this schizophrenia revision video. If you don't understand any of the content I cover here, go to my longer videos for a full explanation. But if you just need a reminder of the key points quickly, this is the video for you. But don't just use this video. I've got a Psychboost app and it's designed to test your knowledge of all the topics in A-level psychology actively using flashcards. It's an iOS and Android and you can use it for all of Paper 1 for free. If instead you want tutorial support videos with questions from all three papers, you can access over 16 hours of these, as well as hundreds of printable resources over on my Patreon. But enough of that, let's get started. Classification of Schizophrenia According to the DSM-5 for the diagnosis of schizophrenia, two of the following symptoms need to be present for at least a month. One being positive. Positive symptoms. Experiences that are in addition to normal experiences. Hallucinations. Additional sensory experiences such as seeing distortions in objects that look like faces, hearing critical voices. Delusions. Irrational beliefs about themselves or the world. For example, persecution. The government is out to get me. Or grandeur. I am the president. Negative symptoms. Loss of normal experiences and abilities. Abolition. A lack of purposeful world behaviour. No energy, sociability, affection, or attempt at personal hygiene. Generally apathetic. Speech poverty. Brief verbal communication style. Loss of quality and quantity of verbal responses. It can be classified as a positive symptom if speech is excessively disorganised, with sufferers wandering off the point. Reliability and validity. Reliability in the diagnosis of classification of schizophrenia. Inter-rater reliability measures if two observers agree. For example, if two doctors give the same diagnosis. Test-retest reliability is the same doctor giving the same diagnosis over time with the same symptoms. Validity in the diagnosis and classification of schizophrenia. In the context of schizophrenia, validity questions if a person has the disorder when diagnosed, or if schizophrenia is a real disorder with clear and unique symptoms. Beck, 1963, found 153 patients diagnosed by multiple doctors only had 54% concordance rate between the doctor's assessments. This lack of agreement suggests there's low inter-rate reliability in diagnosing schizophrenia. This also suggests many people are diagnosed incorrectly, low validity, potentially receiving inappropriate treatments. Comorbidity. Schizophrenia is often diagnosed with other disorders. This could lead to an inaccurate diagnosis of schizophrenia when it could be a severe case of depression. Symptom overlap. Bipolar disorder also has hallucinations and delusions as a symptom, positive. If the two disorders are so similar, they may not be distinct and should be redefined. Buckley, 2009, found comorbidity rates for schizophrenia. Depression, 50%, drug abuse, 47%, PTSD, 29%, and OCD 23%. Gender bias. Cotton argues women's experience of schizophrenia is taken less seriously and underdiagnosed compared to men due to women's better social coping strategies, leading to being less likely to seek treatment. Culture bias. People of Afro Caribbean heritage in the UK are up to nine times more likely to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Fernando argues this is due to category failure, when Western definitions of mental illness are applied to people from non Western cultures. Loring and Powell, 1988, sent 290 psychiatrists to identical case studies, altering ethnicity and gender. The researchers found overdiagnosis if the case study claimed to be of a black client and underdiagnosis if the case study claimed it was of a female client. The most accurate diagnosis was when the gender and race of the psychiatrist were the same as in the case study. This suggests the existence of gender and cultural bias in psychiatrist diagnosis of schizophrenia. Biological Explanations of Schizophrenia The genetic explanation for schizophrenia. Genes code for biological processes, including variations in neural, brain, structure and biochemistry. There's not one single schizophrenia gene, but a collection of gene locations that are associated with a higher risk of developing schizophrenia, meaning the disorder is polygenetic. Concordance rates are higher in families than found in the general population, at 1%, and the closely related the family member the higher the concordance for schizophrenia. This is argued to be due to the increased genetic similarity. Neural correlates are the variation in neural structure and biochemistry that are correlated with an increased risk of developing schizophrenia. The dopamine hypothesis. Symptoms of schizophrenia are due to too much or an imbalance of the dopamine neurotransmitter across the brain. Excessive amounts of dopamine, hyperdopamine in speech centers like Broca's area may lead to auditory hallucinations. Lower levels, 
hypodopaminergia in areas like the frontal cortex are linked to negative symptoms like abolition or speech poverty. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter involved in learning, attention and memory and it's found in low quantities in people with schizophrenia. Enlarged ventricles, voids in the brain filled with cerebrospinal fluid has been correlated with schizophrenia. Gottman, 1991, found a concordance rate for schizophrenia of 48% for identical twins, monozygotic MZ, and 17% for non-identical twins, dizygotic DZ. The general population rate is 1%. This suggests there are genetic factors. However, as the concordance rate is far less than 100% for monozygotic twins, there must be a role for environmental factors. Tanari, 2004, studied the biological children of schizophrenic mothers who had been adopted. Finding 5.8% of children adopted into psychologically healthy families developed schizophrenia compared to 36.8% of children raised in dysfunctional families. This research supports the influence of biological factors due to the high rate, even in psychologically healthy families. Still, a higher figure for dysfunctional families suggests a psychological trigger is a factor. In a meta-analysis including 2012 studies, Luchette found that drug treatments that work via normalizing dopamine levels were more effective than a placebo. The efficacy of treatments directly influencing the dopamine system supports the dopamine hypothesis biological theory of schizophrenia. Claiming schizophrenia is biologically determined due to genetics and neurochemistry may make sufferers feel disempowered when diagnosed and passively reliant on drug therapies. The cognitive soft determinist perspective suggests that clients can reconstruct irrational mental processes, empowering sufferers to control their disorder actively. Explaining schizophrenia at the basic cellular and chemical level has the advantage of the scientific principle of parsimony. It has also led to highly effective drug therapies. However, taking a biologically reductionist approach fails to consider the evidence for psychological causes of schizophrenia. The diathesis stress approach to explaining schizophrenia is more likely to be valid than biology alone. This suggests that the root cause is a biological, genetic weakness, a diathesis. However, an environmental stressor, such as family stress, must be present to trigger the disorder. Psychological explanations for schizophrenia. Family dysfunction. Schizophrenia symptoms are due to the interpersonal relationships within the family. Schizophrenic mother, a psychodynamic theory. Paranoid delusions result from the influence of a cold, rejecting and controlling mother and a passive father. An atmosphere of stress and secrecy triggers psychotic thinking. Double bind theory. Due to mixed messages, feels unable to do the correct thing. Disorganized thinking and paranoia. Expressed emotion. Verbal interactions, exaggerated involvement, indicating the sufferer is a burden by self-sacrifice. Criticism and control of the sufferer's behavior. Physical and verbal emotional hostility towards the sufferer, equaling rejection. Cognitive explanations. The ability to process thoughts is dysfunctional. Firth's attention deficit theory. A faulty attention system cannot filter pre-conscious thought and gives too much significance to the information that would usually be filtered, overloading the mind. This accounts for positive symptoms like hallucinations and delusions. Delusions of a control. A fault in meta-representation, the ability to identify your thoughts and actions as your own. In a meta-analysis including 27 studies, Butzloff and Hooley showed that relapse into schizophrenia is significantly more likely in families with issues of expressed emotion. Tanari found that only 5.8% of biological children of schizophrenic mothers adopted into psychologically healthy families develop schizophrenia, compared to 36.8% of children adopted into dysfunctional families. It's socially sensitive to suggest that the family causes schizophrenia, as it is likely to cause additional stress and anxiety. Research evidence that schizophrenia has a biological cause, such as genetics, Gottsman, and neurotransmitters, Luchette. Sterling, 2006, found patients with schizophrenia took twice as long to name the colour in the Stroop test as the controls. Suggests people with schizophrenia have dysfunctional thought processing, in this case with faulty central control. The ability to suppress and override automatic actions and speech and make deliberate actions to achieve goals. The evidence in this area is correlational, and it could be that having a schizophrenic child is the cause of family dysfunction. Biological treatments for schizophrenia. Antipsychotics, also known as neuroleptics, are medications used to control the symptoms of psychosis, for example delusions and hallucinations. They're taken in pill form or injected. Typical antipsychotics, first generation drug therapy used since the 1950s, that are less popular due to severe side effects, and they only treat positive symptoms. For example, clopromazine. These drugs work as dopamine antagonists. They reduce, calm, dopamine activity by blocking dopamine receptors at the synapse, reducing positive symptoms, 
such as hallucinations and delusions. Side effects include dry mouth, constipation, lethargy, confusion, and tardive dyskinesia. Atypical antipsychotics. Second generation drug therapy, 1970s onwards. For example, clozapine. These avoid the more severe side effects of typical antipsychotics. Block dopamine receptors, but also act on other neurotransmitters. For example, acetylcholine, glutamate, and serotonin. Atypical also addresses the negative symptoms, such as abolition. Side effects include weight gain and cardiovascular problems. Atypical is less likely to cause involuntary movements. In a meta-analysis, including 212 studies, Lachette found that drug treatments of symptoms was more effective than a placebo. This suggests drug treatments that target the dopamine system are effective in reducing symptoms. Bagnall reviewed 232 studies comparing the effectiveness of atypical and typical antipsychotics. Atypical drugs were found to be more effective than typical in treating overall symptoms, resulting in fewer movement disorder side effects and fewer people leaving the drug treatments early. Overall, clozapine was the most effective drug. Drug therapies are cheap, especially compared to providing hospital treatment or one-to-one -one psychological therapies. Tarrier. Place patients randomly into routine care, antipsychotics, CBT, or a combined treatment. Patients in the combined treatment significantly improved the severity and number of positive symptoms, as well as fewer days in hospital receiving care. This suggests drug therapies are effective, but better when combined with psychological therapies. Drug therapies may only suppress symptoms and not treat the underlying problem, which may be cognitive. Hey there, I just still watching, I'm guessing you'll find this video useful. As I release content right up to the exams, don't forget to subscribe so you know when new videos are uploaded. Also, as this video is being released, I'm on around 50,000 subscribers, and I'd love to get to 100k at some point in the next few years. Psychological treatments for schizophrenia. Cognitive behaviour therapy. Assumes that schizophrenia results from dysfunctional thought processes. ABCDE model by Ellis. The therapist's role is to identify and challenge irrational beliefs by logically disputing the reality of the faulty cognitions, delusions, and then cognitively structuring the beliefs into alternatives. Effect E. Reality testing is the process in which the patient can demonstrate that their irrational thoughts, hallucinations and illusions, are not real, symptom targeting. For example, if they claim to see the future, test this. Family therapy. Attempts to improve the home situation of the person with schizophrenia, as family dysfunction can increase the risk of relapse into schizophrenia. The treatment is family-centred, intended to change the whole family's behaviour, not just the person with schizophrenia. The family is educated on symptoms, psychoeducation, develops techniques to reduce conflict, stress and self-sacrifice, and improves communication and problem-solving skills. Token economies are designed to make behaviour more manageable within a hospital or to prepare long-stay patients for transfer into the community. Based on Skinner's offer and conditioning, tokens are used as positive reinforcement. Patients are immediately rewarded when they show a predefined target behaviour, such as washing. Tokens are exchanged for something else that they want, activities or chocolate. Behaviours are progressively changed, behaviour shaping, with tokens given first for small changes in behaviour towards the ideal. Cognitive behaviour therapy. Sensky found patients who had resisted drug treatments had a reduction in positive and negative symptoms when treated with 19 sessions of CBT. Also, they continued to improve even nine months after the treatment had ended. CBT does not produce the unpleasant side effects of drug therapies, making it a preferred treatment plan for many patients. The high cost of working with a trained therapist over multiple sessions means drug therapy is cheaper. Dropping out of CBT is common. This may be due to the length of the treatment, and symptoms may become severe. CBT requires engagement. Negative symptoms can lead to an unwillingness to participate, or positive can lead to distrust of the process. Family therapy. Left review the aftercare of patients with schizophrenia. Of those with standard outpatient care, 50% had relapsed within 9 months, compared to only 8% who received family therapy. However, after two years, this had risen to 50% with family therapy and 75% with standard outpatient care. Family therapy is about improving symptoms, aiding the family's home life, and ultimately avoiding admission into a mental health facility. However, it's not a cure for the disorder, and while more manageable, symptoms remain. There are problematic practical issues, such as the length of the therapy. Family therapy can often take up to a year. Patients may drop out during this time, especially if they have severe symptoms or family incidents. Dickerson found when reviewing the findings of 13 studies, token economies can effectively improve the adaptive behaviour of people with schizophrenia. Token economies do not directly treat symptoms of schizophrenia. They only attempt to manage negative symptoms such as poor motivation, poor attention and social withdrawal. 
using Skinnerian principles, could be seen as degrading to patients, effectively manipulating them like lab rats. Ethics. The interactional approach, explaining and treating schizophrenia. Interactionalist approach, suggests the development of schizophrenia is due to the combined effect and interaction of biological and social psychological factors, and treatment is effective when combining biological and cognitive therapies. The importance of an interactionist approach in explaining schizophrenia. The diffuser stress model is a psychological concept that a disorder is due to the interaction between a predisposed vulnerability, diaphesis, and an environmental trigger later in life. Stressor. Diaphesis and schizophrenia. Consider a genetic vulnerability, potentially resulting in a dopamine imbalance. Stressors and schizophrenia. Negative environmental experience such as family dysfunction, emotional stress and anxiety, or a major adverse life event. This emotional event then triggers the disorder. The importance of an interactionist approach in treating schizophrenia suggests that as there's both a biological and psychological aspect to schizophrenia development, the effective treatment of schizophrenia would combine psychological aspects such as CBT and biological drug therapies to address both causes. In patients with severe schizophrenic symptoms, biological treatments can allow them to reduce their symptoms to engage in psychological therapies. CBT can give sufferers the cognitive skills to change their underlying faulty cognitions. Gottsman found a concordant rate for schizophrenia of 48% for identical twins, monozygotic MZ, and 17% for non-identical twins, diazygotic DZ. The general population rate is 1%. This suggests there are genetic factors. However, as the concordance rate is far less than 100% for monozygotic twins, there must be an interaction with environmental factors. Tanari studied the biological children of schizophrenic mothers who had been adopted. Finding 5.8% of children adopted into psychologically healthy families developed schizophrenia, compared to 36.8% of children raised in dysfunctional families. This research supports the influence of biological factors due to the high rate, even in psychologically healthy families. Still, the higher figure for dysfunctional families suggests a psychological trigger is needed. Interaction The mechanism by which an adverse psychological event triggers a complex biological response resulting in symptoms is still uncertain reducing confidence in the interactionist approach as a full explanation for schizophrenia. The diaphesis for schizophrenia is no longer considered a single gene. Now researchers understand it's polygenetic. It also includes vulnerabilities like early emotional trauma like child abuse, acting as a diaphesis by altering neurological development. Read 2001. Also, the understanding of risk triggers have developed to include factors such as drug abuse. Terry assigned patients to routine care, antipsychotics, or routine care and CBT. Patients in the combined treatment significantly improved the severity and number of positive symptoms and had fewer days in the hospital receiving care. This suggests an interactionist approach to treating schizophrenia is more effective than antipsychotics alone. Taking an interactionist approach to treating schizophrenia has the same limitations as both treatment options. The unpleasant side effects of drug therapy and the high financial cost of one-to-one -one support from a trained therapist. Don't forget you can now test yourself on the schizophrenia unit with the Cypress app. And if you want to try out the app, all the topics and paper want to free. And you can get it on iOS or Android. If you want to see model answers to questions or access my other resources, there's also Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, I do want to thank all of my patrons for their support. With the help of all of these students and teachers, I am able to teach part-time so I can work on the main mission of Psychboost, the development of a free-to-watch and, hopefully high-quality, A-level psychology course. And a special thank you to Kat Posnick and Ahmed Romani for supporting at the developer level. So, thanks to them, good luck with your revision, and I'll see you in the next Psychboost video.